before I got Parkinson's, my life was pretty much all about sports. Skiing, snow skiing in the winter, water skiing in the summer, playing tennis. So interestingly, I've had, I have a movement disorder that kind of prohibits me from doing those things that I, I love to do. When I was about 37 years old, my hand in particular was had a ticking motion, which reminded me of one of my grandfathers when I was growing up. Um, both of my grandfathers had Parkinson's, but this one particular movement was very familiar to me. Tamara, a former sales executive and mother of two, was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. Nine years ago, she met Linda, to whom she's developed a close bond. Today, Linda is a carer who supports Tamara in everyday life. Tamara is a pretty amazing person. I'm not the only one who helps her, but I think maybe I'm the one who's been around for a long time. She's not only a single mom with Parkinson's, she also has two special needs children. You know, it's funny when I think about how she was stubborn originally. I didn't know her real well at that point in time. And it was a night where she brought one of her kids to something and she had ventured out and she really probably shouldn't. And I remember thinking, okay, she needs more help and she needs to be willing to say that she needs more help. My stubbornness in the early years, I was kind of getting well known at church and in the community around my neighborhood for getting someplace and realizing I, that I was in over my head and needed help to get home. That's when I decided it was time to start accepting help. Why are the caregivers important? Because they're, they're looking at the whole movie. And oftentimes, uh, when the physician is only seeing the patient for 15, 30 minutes, they're missing out on the entire movie. That's a little snapshot of the patient. She has young onset Parkinson's disease, which is a particular type of the condition that has its own characteristics and uh, responses to medication. So the important thing is to recognize these uh, symptoms when they occur so that you can treat them early and make the necessary adjustments in the medication to minimize them or perhaps even eliminate them. So it's not a, an occasion for becoming despondent and despaired, but rather an occasion to be uh, vigilant. The first neurologist that I went to told me I'd be making medical history if I had Parkinson's, so he decided I must have essential tremors. So for about six months, I was treated for the wrong disease. <laughs> Don't just assume that a medical doctor, period, can help you with it. We have seen the difference it's made for Tamara to be seeing, you know, the movement disorder specialists. The way I knew it was time to move on and try and find someone with more expertise in this area was when my neurologist was asking me what I learned when I went to Parkinson's conferences. And I thought, if I know more about what's going on with research than he does, it's time for me to find somebody that's more in the loop. When I first got the diagnosis of Parkinson's, the medication that I got masked the symptoms well enough that I pretty much carried on my daily life just as it had been. Uh, over time, I needed more medication to keep myself feeling good. The problem is that as the disease progresses, the therapeutic window, that little window between too much and too little, gets narrower. So the ability to get in that therapeutic window becomes uh, equivalent to a pitcher trying to get into a strike zone that gets smaller and smaller. When the medicine's tailing off, my hands get kind of tingly and numb. I just feel like I'm attached to whatever I'm sitting or standing on. It sounds kind of crazy, but when you're feeling good, you, you kind of try not to think about the fact that you need to take more medicine, and you, you kind of get lost in the moment because you're feeling so good. Then all of a sudden, <laughs> it hits you, and you realize, oops, I, I went beyond my, my limit there. When the disease forced Tamara to leave her professional career, 
she instead refocused and now leads fundraising efforts for Parkinson's awareness. The organization that I'm working with currently on my fundraising initiative is the Wilkins Parkinson's Foundation. And the mission of that group is to build awareness of what Parkinson's is and to help raise funds for research. Partners who are trying to put together the final details on my fundraiser, which is here in Atlanta, and it's the ninth year that we've done it. APDA and you and you. By the end of this fundraiser, my team will have raised over $600,000. One of the most important messages that we can give to patients is empower them to reduce the accumulation of secondary disability that layers on very quickly when you have Parkinson's disease because the nature of the piece, the illness, is to decrease mobility, slowing down, etc., which drives you in a natural way towards, I don't want to do much. Playing tennis gives me a way to feel like I'm a human being again. Feel like I'm, be, I'm able to do something that I really enjoy doing. Even if you're not having a good day, when, when I get out on the tennis court, my brain forgets that I'm not supposed to be able to react a certain way. Patient quality of life, I think it's a holy grail because it it's the, has as many definitions as there are patients. And I think in Parkinson's disease, that and physical activity should be viewed as part of the treatment. That's how you cope with the illness. That's how you maintain the quality of life. Being able to play with my kids or go places with the family, it makes me feel normal for a minute. And it just it means the world to me to be able to have people in my life that are willing to help me do those things. For someone who's just been diagnosed with Parkinson's, the advice that I would have for them would first be to go to a movement disorder specialist. They have much better perspective and much more experience dealing with Parkinson's patients. Another thing I would say is to accept help, take advantage of it because someday you're gonna wish you had and you're gonna need their help.